Howdy folks, um, we are a couple members of Team Holy Cow, specifically I'm Tobin, I'm Ian, and I'm Rice. And today we're just going to talk a little bit about some things. First of all, we want to talk about the game manual part one that was just released. And I guess we'll just start with what everyone's favorite parts are. Uh, my favorite part is the mention of coffee. Um, can you search that up for me, I guess? <laughs> If you didn't know, last year on the forum, someone asked if they could use coffee beans for picking up blocks. Or it's not right. really sure. Like coffee it was coffee like... beans in a balloon or something. Um, and so this year, it says uh, the following types of mechanisms and components are not allowed. Those that contain materials that would cause a delay of game if released, uh, e.g. ball bearings, coffee beans, <laughs> etc. Um, speaking of delay games as released, it, when we were rookies, we had this like ball machine on the back of our robot yeah. for the first thing that like it was all Lego and it would turn a Lego motor and it would pop these balls up. It was kind of this like popcorn maker, but it broke open in one of the matches and in just our got first it. match. Our first match, I think. So. No, it wasn't our very first uh, match, but first competition. First competition. Anyway, we never used that again. Anyway, Ian, your um, favorite part? My favorite part was probably just some of the changes they've made to some of the raw materials you can use. Um, Specifically, you're now allowed to use injection molded parts. Yep. Um, for example, Legos and Connects are both injection molded. So yeah, Legos were already legal. Legal, but if you guys don't know, Ian here is two-time World Connects champion. So uh, we're pretty excited to have those at our disposal. Not that we'll actually use them, but what? <laughs> okay. Uh, and then the other one. Single degree of freedom COTS part. If you don't know, COTS means custom off the shelf. Oh. Um, commercial? Oh. I thought it was what you slept on. Oh. Uh, yeah. That kind of. <laughs> um, anyways, single degree of freedom ones are now allowed, such as hinges. So. That I can foresee a lot of shenanigans on the forums about. Yes, this uh, drill is a single <laughs> degree of freedom. Anyway, Ernest? Uh. Interestingly, now the prototype board, you can attach a 9 volt battery to it. Previously, you could get like 22 milliamps of current off of it. Now you can get a full 9 volt battery's worth of electricity. So you can have whatever you want on your prototype board, basically. So, like um, ultrasonic sensors, you could have eight ultrasonic sensors or uh, a camera. Yeah, definitely. Well, that works for me, especially if you're from uh, Lincoln High School. Anyway, a couple other interesting things uh, that we noticed. One thing, um, last year, well, in all the years pretty much, there's been this rule of, against using, switching out robots in the competition. Can you find that? It's like, I think you can find it by searching the... Robot. No, I think it's that's a lot. No, it's, it's, the first it's against the spirit rule. of this rule. Look at spirit. Look up spirit. I no, think. there's going to be a lot of spirits. Oh, uh, right. Warning. Team spirit. Um, yeah. Oh, the rules. Oh, uh, there it is. Here we go. Okay, it is against general robot rules. So, B has always been in here. It is against the intent of this rule, intent, not spirit, to switch back and forth between multiple robots at a time. That's not really a problem. The interesting thing is that now this year we have A, which is it is against the intent of this rule to compete with run, run robot, one robot. While a second is being modified or assembled at a tournament. At a tournament. That is not clear, but one thing that that could mean, there's been this process called uh, leapfrog design. A lot of good teams do it, like um, Cougars and... Did Monkey Madness do it last year? I think they did. Um, anyway, sort of, yeah. a lot of teams with more resources, especially, we could never afford to do that. Um, or one of our robots would be like, Look, one Hendrix channel. <laughs> no Axel Hub. Anyway, um, so a lot of teams do that, especially some of the more um, prestigious ones. That might not be allowed anymore, but hard to know. And even if it is, that's not really an enforceable rule anyway. Um, because, you know, if you don't, unless you bring both to a competition, which teams did, Neutrinos brought both their robots to Worlds. Um, Unless you did that, there's no way that they would know. Anyway. Yeah, talk about five feet. Yeah, yeah, five feet. Um, so everyone is always trying to figure out what the game for next year is going to be, and we have lots of speculations too, but 
Game Manual 1 isn't really supposed to actually tell you anything about what the game is, but um, we were searching through it looking for some rules that they might have changed that could hint at what they are, and there was one that really st stood out to us. Is so, it the no Nintendo DS peer-to-peer? -peer? Yeah, no, I can't <laughs> find it, but I'll just talk about it. Um, in the past five years, there's been a rule saying that you cannot launch a game element higher than four feet in the air or further than ten feet, you know, horizontal distance. But, in this game manual, they've changed the height to five feet. Mm -hmm. So that seems a little bit suspicious. Why would they change that rule all of a sudden, unless you're launching things? Yeah, could mean nothing, could mean something. I want to detour briefly to talk about our favorite shooting robots RG down 11. the years. RG-11. RG-11. Anyway, our favorite shooting robots uh, in Block Party, there was Terabytes, uh, who, you know, shot things with, you know, some accuracy. Um, who else? Who, uh, mm, I don't remember. The, the, I think the battery-powered pickle jar heads shot things at one oh, point. Oh, they did, yeah. Um, and at Worlds, there was a team, uh, two bits and a bite, 4029 from Concord, Massachusetts, I believe. That's where Walton Pond is. Um, anyway, um, that shot the cube in the Lexington High School, yeah. That, uh, wait, is it Lexington High Lexington. School in Concord? I don't know. I think it might be Lexington. Okay. Probably close enough. I anyway. know who you are. <laughs> um, they shot their autonomous block with pretty much complete accuracy. I never saw them miss. Um, so that's pretty cool. Yep. Anyway, Ernest, you got another rad rule? Oh, um, you can fix your motors now. Um, it's <laughs> legal to repair your gearboxes, provided you don't like put batteries in the gearboxes or power them up somehow. Batteries <laughs> in the gearboxes. <laughs> I hear the uh, Capital High School gear grinders are going to try that. <laughs> um, but if your motor gets like totally burned out, that still sucks. But, I mean, that would never happen, right? Like That never happens yeah. to anyone, ever. So. Does, do those sort of rules apply to servos, too? Uh, it is not clear. They don't explicitly mention it. They just say gearboxes, for example. Yeah. Um, there are new servo rules, though, right? Oh, yes. Um, you can now use any quarter scale or smaller servo. Um, so if it's advertised as ginormous, humongo servo, you probably can't use it. Yeah. Um, and each servo controller can control up to five amps worth of stall current servo, so you could have like one giant quarter scale servo. Yeah, well so last year we found that uh, like gold plated servo or whatever. <laughs> I was about to look that up. Uh, you go to Servo City, they have pretty much ever, every servo ever, and there is a servo with like 1,500 ounce and inches of torque. And it is like, it's the uh, 1000 SGT servo, HS1000 SGT. Now, it costs $400, <laughs> but that's about our budget for the entire robot. <laughs> Man, imagine what it would feel like to burn out that servo and break it, you know, you're just like, ah. Uh. Yeah, how? Yeah, I know, right? Well, sorry, boss, we put the elephant on it. Oh. We need to. Uh, there's a rule that says... You cannot use tires that, well, let's see. Let me That's see. interesting, yeah. Oh yeah, high, uh, let's see, RO4D, high traction wheels that may damage the playing field are not allowed. Um, batteries in black, this is for you. You yeah. can't, you cannot destroy the arena with your 55 pound robot. Um, they actually, the example that they give, the AM2256, are Andy Mark Plaction wheels. <laughs> Those are, I'm pretty sure those wheels that tons of teams, batteries in black, Eagles used them, didn't they? Mm. Yeah. Well, they just used no. the treads, right? Oh, Andy Park. Uh, I don't think so. Cougar robotics. Four inch high grip wheel, Andy Mark. Um, oh, yeah, Cougars had them for their middle wheels. Um, oh, those yeah. wheels? Yeah. They're, those oh, are pretty common. Yeah, those so aren't flexion wheels, though. I was thinking it was a flexion wheel. All lines. Wait, these are flexion Cougar. wheels. Cougars, wow. Yeah. Capital uses those. Tons of teams. Um, yeah. Use those wheels. Can't anymore. Interestingly, though, last year was the first year that we really saw those happening at all. So it's pretty oh, quick response. Oh, because the wheels, they allowed any four inch wheels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were like, oh, no, 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 crap. <laughs> Didn't mean to. Take it all back. Uh, okay, let's see. Um, another kind of interesting rule change. This is also sort of a, a response, like a reflex almost is that um, teams cannot participate in multiple Super Regionals now. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. With the introduction of the Super Regionals last year, I guess maybe no one thought that you would be able to 
do that, but teams did do it, uh, most notably Robogamers, or Robogamers, I should say, <laughs> um, participated. They're a team from New York who was in our Super Regional uh, over here on the West Coast. Um, that was interesting. Uh, who else? Oh, um, the Montana people. Redneck Robotics, um, 724, and they weren't supposed to be in our. No, I think. They went to. I think it was only 45 35 that did that. Oh, okay. They, being in Montana, actually were pretty well located to go to both north and west. Yeah. Um, I think, honestly, not really too big of a deal. Um, and really, I don't mind teams that are actually. Well, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? Should teams be able to? Playing good teams is a good experience. Playing good. Yeah, but you could lose. Yeah, I mean, but that's not. It's a good experience if you win. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, here's a rule that probably will not apply. Well, first we'll mention EV threes are still not allowed. That's notable. Um, uh, we can't blame Robot C devs for that. Sorry, Robot C devs, if you're watching this. <laughs> <laughs> that seems pretty likely. <laughs> and then Lego pneumatics are no longer allowed. Uh, and no one uses those anyways. <laughs> so oh, yeah, because they're <laughs> illegal. <laughs> I will say though, there if you go on YouTube and go to like Lego pneumatic stuff. There's some pretty impressive things out there. People making like life-size terminators out of like <laughs> just you know like pneumatics. Okay. Whatever. Um. There's another response kind of rule. RGO three I states that you can't ground your robot anymore, mm -hmm. or you can't have parts that drag on the floor and ground your robot. And they explicitly said that this time. Hmm. That's interesting. Uh, maybe we'll talk about it some other time. Maybe we'll talk about it right now. Who knows? Uh, grounding has, is a really interesting, and when I say interesting, what I mean is not really interesting, but just sort of baffling problem um, that we encountered not so much in Olympia, but when we headed over to St. Louis, or even when we were in Sacramento, where the weather was different, we started to notice a problem with static electricity. Part of it, you know, might have been like, oh, a robot's not working, must have been sad. That said, there were also times when we would touch our robot and, you know. And after we got back from well, Sacramento, the robot had static, which was weird because it didn't before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true, actually. We had static problems with our robot at home after we'd been in Sacramento. Uh -oh. Anyway, um, solving static problems is pretty much impossible. Um, you're not allowed to ground your robot. Grounding your robot's kind of an interesting thing because if you just like put a chain to the rubber mat, uh, that won't work. Um, conveniently, rubber is great, or foam or whatever, is great for uh, building up static. Uh, it doesn't discharge, so that's really a pain. The static issue remains sort of the uh, elephant in the room. You know, at Worlds, pretty much everybody just sprayed their robot with static spray and used ferrite chokes and then crossed their fingers. I mean, here's one way to solve it. You could um, pour water on your robot, as long as you don't contaminate the field. Water game? What? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Hey! Um, okay, here's another thing. Um, I'm not as fancy as Ernest, so I don't know what rule this is, but it says, LEDs may not communicate in any way with other robots on the playing field. Any part of the field management R system... The Whatever. <laughs> or any game element. But they do not mention anything about the drivers. Yeah, that's interesting. This was an ambiguous rule last year, I think. I think it was sort of the, our team's feeling about last year was that if you had like an LED notification that that wouldn't really be legal, but that you could probably get away with it. And there were a number of teams who had them. I know a FUFA used, had LEDs that showed how many cubes they had, hypothetically at least. Um, this year, it seems like they're nudging people and saying, yeah, go ahead, do that. Not illegal, but... It seems like they want to allow them, but all the other rules that they have written previously have made it illegal. Yeah. Except for sometimes they throw an exception. Around. Well, there is, there's that, there is a really interesting snafu of do you consider the lights to be um, decoratory? Which is like a good way to get around the rules to say something is decoratory, but really Throw they throw in here somewhere if it were decoratory would the score of the game have changed if you didn't have it and That is where previous that's what we based our previous sort of feeling on um, Anyway, do we got anything else? Um, this is completely random, but since they changed the, the height from four feet to five feet we're predicting it's going to involve throwing
throwing things, there's a phone. And our only prediction is that the game is going to be named Throw Up. Yeah. And we know that there was a game called Toss Up, but... Yeah, this is different. Throw Up is going to be the team, or team, going to be the game. Okay. Hold on. Okay. Oh, no. We're in... Uh, we'll continue this, even though Ernest is on the phone. I'll be um, home in a sack. With some other... No, okay. no <laughs> With some other game predictions, um... Yeah, anyone have so many ideas? I know... You I guess it's going to be a water game. <laughs> <laughs> I know you guys were playing with the idea of extreme ironing. Oh, thanks, yeah. But let's go through the major sports real quick here. Uh, we went through the list of every single sport that Wikipedia had. Um, it's about, like, a thousand sports long. It's crazy. Um, and we didn't come up with anything except basketball. basketball. And extreme ironing. And mm -hmm. extreme ironing. Well, what else is there? Uh, baton twirling. Yeah, most of them are kind of stupid, like... Scrimmage. That's uh, not a sport. <laughs> like... Robotics, on the other hand, they're a sport. Noodling. Spearfishing, Noodling. yes. <laughs> hey, these are Surf water games. fishing? That sounds intense. Yeah, it's weird how you're in the water section. Uh, just to take a brief detour and talk about weird Olympic sports. Medieval football? <laughs> <laughs> in, uh, Greece, at one Olympics a while ago, um... There was the uh, Greek um, sailor swimming competition, and you could only enter if you were a Greek sailor. Um, the other nations caught on pretty quick. There's also been in 1900, I believe, when it was in Paris, I think. And it's interesting. Greece was 2000. Right? No, it was, it was. Yeah, but this was a different Greece one. Um, the 1900 Olympics, I think. Yeah, they were in Paris. They were in Paris, and. I, it's weird. When you look up weird Olympic sports, it seems like every single entry comes from the 1900 Summer Olympics. But my favorite weird sport from then was the um, solo synchronized swimming. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Underwater hockey. Unicycle hockey. What? Unicycle hockey. Anyway, as you can see, if you look at Wikipedia, oh, they just are like not helpful in predicting what the game is going to be. Oh, unicycle hockey is just hockey on a unicycle. Yeah. Huh? Weird. <laughs> Um, to take a brief uh, little change of subject, another thing we've been doing to keep ourselves busy in this... Suicide? What? <laughs> there was suicide up there, I saw it. Another thing we've been doing to keep ourselves busy in the void of uh, robot building is um, if you go to the first website, you can go to the thing that says find a team or an event near me, and then you can look at all the teams that have registered so far for this year. And they have a nice database, and we have been doing that a lot. So we've got some interesting info from that <clears throat> for you. Uh, the most common team name so far. Um, there are just shy of 600 teams registered when we looked at this. Um, well, Eagles, Cougars, and Warriors, there are six occurrences of each of those. Uh, Wolves, well, Gear is eight. Cyber, nine. Wolves is 10, and I think that tops sort of the normal things, like the actual nouns, because uh, if you search tech, you'll find 22. Uh, there are 34 names that include the word team, and 43 that include the word robotics. So I guess in general, team names are pretty much on the right track. But I don't know, do you guys have favorite team names? Um, well, should we do these? Oh, we'll do that. I'm about to do that. Okay, um... The stuffed dragons, we our pit was next to theirs at the Super Regional competition, the West one, and we noticed that they have a new registered team, the Overstuffed hey, Dragons. Hey, there's a good rookie team. Yeah. Right? Um, uh, we need a team name? That's, that's, uh, that's a good, good one. It's all oh. caps, too. Interestingly, there are six teams called TBD. <laughs> <laughs> um, Robo Toasters. I like that a bit. <laughs> one interesting thing... Uh, last year at Worlds, we met a team called the Enterprisers that apparently had some kind of gnarly team politics um, and were didn't get along so well with each other. This year, there are two teams. They're from Reno, Nevada. This year, that team, 6024, is registered again, um, but there's also another team from uh, Reno, Nevada called the Enterprisers, team 5326. So it seems like those guys are going their separate ways, which is... Maybe too bad, I don't know. 
Speaking of really confusing teams names, though, <laughs> this is just mean, honestly. Um, one of the teams on the winning alliance at Worlds was from Florida Eagles Robotics Experience, 5257. Uh, there's a team now from Virginia, I think, called Eagles Ro Eagle Robotics. Their number is 5527. So uh, I hope they both get to some sort of place where they would play each other um, and just confuse the heck out of everybody. Anyway. Uh, speaking of confusing, first, uh, Tesla has a number of teams, 11 of them actually. Yeah, um, big number. They're from Twin Falls, Idaho, and Kimberly, which has a population of about 50,000. But 11 teams we're not 50,000 people. Yeah, we're not sure how they did that. One person teams. One person There's teams. There's the answer. And then additionally, um, Mount Olive's robotics team is a really famous FRC team. They're team number 11. And this year they decided that uh, they didn't just want to do FRC. They wanted to do FTC. Teams. Yeah, start a couple of teams, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so they started 13 FTC teams. <laughs> yeah, we uh, we looked a little bit into this because we were like, what the heck? Also, they named them Mount Olive number one and Mount Olive number two. Like, anyway, um, we looked into this. We found a post on their Facebook um, that was some people talking about it. Apparently, last year they had run about 90 people on their FRC team, and that they thought that was too many. I would agree. Um, but so to solve that, they one found another FRC team, and they founded these 13 FTC teams that hypothetically will have less than 90 people. Yeah, that will balance out the numbers. Speaking of really large teams, do you guys remember that team we mentioned earlier, actually, the shooting team, Two Bits and a Bite? They, um, I think, brought like 20 people or something. 30. 30. 30. They were, the stands were full of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we sat behind them and they just had fun. They also had the most impressive scouting system I saw at Worlds, which was um, basically they had one guy just had this like file holding thing. It was just full of folders, and it had one folder for each team, and um, basically they would, the folders had which match numbers that every team played in, the team the folder belonged to at least played in, on the front of it, and that guy would just pass out those folders to some of the millions of Lexington Robotics people um, sitting around him in the stands, and they would just record what happened that match. Um, and so, in that, they got a record of every single match and what happened. Um, much more in-depth than you could have found on the Yellow Alliance Live site, which was really good. Thank you, Jordan. Um, <laughs> uh, but, the because um, they knew things about Autonomous, they knew pretty much everything. I don't remember if they actually got to pick anyone in the end. I don't think so. No, I think they did, didn't they? Maybe, yeah. Did they finish fourth? Or? No, Masquerade finished. No, in our division, though. Anyway, no, uh, uh, it was either Nano Gurus or Overdrive that finished fourth. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so I just googled two bits in a byte, and it says two bits plus one byte equals one point two five bytes. <laughs> Thank you, Google. <laughs> oh man. Hmm. Let's see. Welcome to Lex Robotics. Two bits in a byte and the parody bits. Hey, do you like that? Yeah. I is that name a parody of the other one? <laughs> oh, that's that's cute. It says welcome to the home of Two Bits and a Bite and that has the gateway arch. Their home is a world, I guess. Um Finish off Club. Oh they were oh, okay. They were selected though. By Overdrive and Nano Gurus. Okay. Who uh Cougars and that other team. <laughs> Uh, Redneck won. Red machine and the yeah, one. they uh, finished off those guys. Sorry. And then and then us. us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that was too bad. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I can't think of anything else to think to say. One, one, one last thing. We'll finish with, I guess. This goes back to game prediction. We're jumping around a bit. <laughs> one thing we've been thinking about a lot to uh, do game prediction is thinking about like the game elements. So, um, they ha they've reused game elements as the main thing, I guess, that's important. For example, I th they did they reuse 
They reused the batons. Did they? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, Block Party, they reused the baskets from Bold Over. Oh, that's true. Um, racquetballs have been used in both Bold Over and... Racquetball? That too. Wait, maybe not. Maybe I'm confusing. Yeah, never mind. Why are there two spaces? PVC there? pipe is used pretty much in every single game. Yep, and the plywood. Although what's interesting about plywood this year is that for Block Party, we had to cut our plywood in half, so they had better not make us use a full piece of plywood again. Um, but yeah, in general, though, there's also a trend, it seems, to be a bit of a trend of moving away from prefabricated or whatever uh, more common game elements. So you saw the first sort of games, Quad Con... Quad... Quad quandary. <laughs> Jeez, I wonder how many times that happened during the 2007-2008 season. They used PVC pipe rings, so that's not bad, it's just PVC pipe. Uh, oh, and, and bins, so did they use the same bins for quad quandary too? No, no. I generalized. Oh, okay. That's a weird bin. Anyway, hockey pucks were used, then wiffle balls. Um, More PVC. I don't think there's an H thing. That's pretty straightforward stuff from existing sports. But these days we've got five inch plastic rings and two inch plastic cubes. What we're wondering is, is are we seeing a trend of moving away from like normal stuff to weird stuff? And also, do you think there's any chance of them reusing a game on that we've seen recently? I mean, if you look at Vex, their last game, I don't know what it was called, was like dodecahedrons? Dodecahedra? Yeah, something. We could have truncated a decahedron. And then there's an FRC game with tetrahedrons. Tetrahedra. One thing that might be interesting is trying to pick up flat things off the ground. Yeah, two-dimensional things would be hard to pick up. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean. Um, another question... Well, there's the question of are we going to re reuse stuff. If we were to, it seems like the most likely things to be reused would be racquetballs or bowling balls, in my opinion. I don't think bowling balls. Yeah, I think bowling balls are kind of therapy. But... Um, that was the 2011-2012 season. Uh, teams who are in their fourth year now would have been in their first year then. So it's really the last time that really makes sense to reuse a game element. Because not many teams are going to be spending more than four years. Oh, that reminds me. We should take a moment to... Just a moment of silence for the teams that are not going to be with us anymore. Um, Landroids, Fish in the Boat, Monkey Madness... That's all I can think of. <laughs> <laughs> there are teams. Yeah. You know, oh, Beta. Oh. Oh, our favorite team besides our team. <laughs> Beta, not going to be back. That's really too bad. Um, but I'm sure, you know, Jordan will be around. Okay, here's something interesting. I just searched for fire in the game manual, and <laughs> it only mentions it in fire extinguishers and where they're located. So, so you're yes. thinking it's going to be a fire game? No, like, well, there's no. going to be fire involved, like you can have fire in the robot. And thus it's a water game also. Firefighters, that's the game. No, it's going to be like, firing up or something. <laughs> Fire, the, fire party. That's what it's going to be. Fire party. Shooting. With the with the increased thing, it might be shooting up or throwing <laughs> up. <laughs> I think those are good names. Getting fired. <laughs> Getting fired. Brilliant. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't think they're gonna reuse a game element. I think I'll go on on a limb. It's gonna be basketball with a new game element, some sort of ball, <laughs> and it's gonna be the basketball hoops are gonna be on. PVC pipe something. Well, so that brings up the question. For the Rebound Rumble, they had nice little return shoots. Yeah. To return your shoots. <laughs> <laughs> return your shots. Okay, it almost worked. Anyway, um, do you think we'll have something like that? I don't think so. <laughs> what? You hit the iron in extreme places. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. While skiing or snowboarding on top of bronze statues in the middle of the street, underwater, under the ice cover of a lake. Well, hold on, hold on. Parachute. I think we need it to, cl to clarify real quick. Does the iron have to be like on? I would think so. Well, ironing underwater Battery. with an iron that is on. <laughs> Sonia Thomas ate 40 hot dogs in 10 minutes and earned the inaugural pink Pepto-Bismol belt and won $10,000. Well, I guess that's worth it. Good deal.